call the meeting to order at 7.30. If you'll please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Submitted, say aye. Aye. Opposed? everyone we have a full house glad you're all here um, public comment none chairperson comment none public hearing do we have a motion to open the public hearing I do vote or we open it first, right? I make a motion to open the public hearing number 23-0006. Second. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor of opening the public comment? Hearing. 732, say aye. Aye. Opposed, none. Okay, the public hearing is now open. Would you like a brief presentation on what the application is? Yes, for them. Okay. Public. Uh, so, this is an application from Willow Greenhouse. Um, this was uh, submitted for site plan approval and condition of use approval for a uh, landscape business and a nursery at 7887 Curtis Road. Um, this is a 14.15 acre site. It does include an existing residential uh, home as well as a commercial greenhouse. Um, there are four greenhouse buildings and a farm market on the site that have been previously approved back in 2015. Some of you may remember that, that was before my time. Um, the uh, applicant is looking to expand this business, um, which would include uh, uh, adding nursery stock to the south side of um, Knoll, uh, Oak Knoll Drive, the private road that bisects the middle of the site. Um, the uh, existing greenhouse operation is on the north side of that site. The, the nursery area expansion is to the south, and then they're also looking to do um, a landscape business out of the site, which would be located to the west of the existing buildings north of uh, Oak Knoll Road. Uh, so a, a land, excuse me, a greenhouse is a permitted use, permitted by right, still requires uh, site plan approval, which, as I mentioned, was done back in two, 2015, with some uh, outstanding conditions that had to do with some additional landscaping. Um, the landscape business and the nursery are both considered uh, conditional land uses in the agricultural residential district, which means that it may be a use that's appropriate, it's considered a rural use, but the, uh, the uh, 
approval process has to go through the conditional use permitting process, which includes a public hearing, and there are findings in the zoning ordinance that you as the planning commission should consider as you review this use to ensure its compatibility uh, with the area uh, to make sure that it's um, operated properly, that it doesn't cause nuisances, etc. cetera. Um, that's all outlined in my report. I'm not gonna go into detail in that right now, but you all should look at that as you discuss this, this use when the, after the public hearing when it comes, comes time for the planning commission discussion. Additionally, there are some supplemental standards in the ordinance that each of these uses has to uh, meet in order to comply. So those uh, specific use standards are in section 40.105, 40.107, and 40.108 in the zoning ordinance. So as we reviewed this, we did look at those um, specific use standards and included that as part of the considerations throughout our report. Um, <clears throat> this use, as I mentioned, is uh, excuse me, the site, as I mentioned, is in an agricultural residential zoning district. It is surrounded on all sides by agricultural residential zoning districts. Um, that is consistent with the future land use plan for the area. Um, by and large, the surrounding uses are uh, large lot, uh, single family residential um, homes, uh, with the exception of uh, the uh, farm to the north, uh, three Cedars Farm, which includes the home agricultural operations and uh, a special land use that was approved for um, uh, farm-based tourism, um, which I'm sure everybody is familiar with that site. Um, <clears throat> the applicant did provide a site plan. Um, we note in our report that there are a number of items that uh, we need to see in order to verify compliance um, with various setbacks, some of those things that come from those specific use standards. Uh, especially with regard to the uh, landscape business. So that would be a business that is housed on site, but the work is conducted off site. So to the extent that, um, you know, they may have uh, trucks and trailers and equipment on site that they use off site, um, it is not clear how much um, uh, material would be stored on site. There is a storage area shown on the site plan, um, but you know, sometimes these uses include like bulk storage on site that's used off site. It's not clear if things are delivered directly to the job sites and they just keep their equipment there. I think the applicant could provide uh, more clarification on that when they give their presentation. Um, with regard to circulation, uh, one of the requirements for a landscape business is that it does have to be accessed from a uh, paved road. Um, so the applicant has indicated that they would bring all that traffic from Curtis Road and not off of um, Knoll, uh, Oak Knoll Road, excuse me. Um, additionally, there are uh, some parking requirements. We're looking for calculations on a lot of these things and some clarification on many things. Um, screening requirements that we go into in detail here, specifically for the landscape business, that screening does have to take place on the subject parcel and not utilize uh, existing vegetation, for example, that's on, on a neighboring site. Um, uh, the conditional use permit process uh, does require um, the planning commission to hold a public hearing. Uh, we have to notice that in the paper. We have to send out notification to neighbors within 300 feet, which is probably why you see many of the folks here this evening. Um, gives the uh, neighbors the opportunity to provide comments, ask questions. Um, this is ultimately a decision by the Planning Commission based on the findings of the ordinance, not a, a vote of, of the neighbors, if you will. Um, the, the benefit of having input from the neighbors is to allow us you know, those of us who are doing the plan review, those of you who are making the decision to hear some additional input from, from the area to get a better understanding of what we're dealing with. Um, and then ultimately, um, you as the planning commission have the ability with conditional uses to place additional conditions over and above what's in the zoning ordinance on uh, a particular use if you see it necessary. And those conditions would have to be some kind of legitimate condition to ensure that uh, the use is going to be compatible, that it won't cause nuisances, off-site, etc. Um, so it, it, those, those conditions should not be arbitrary, in other words. Um, it should be based on those findings. And so on page, uh, <coughs> no page numbers on my report, I think it's page five, uh, is where the, the conditional use standards uh, start. So there are a number of them. We kind of incorporate them together for both of these uses, both the uh, landscape business as well as the nursery. 
Um, so I would encourage you to go through those at the time of, the, of your discussion. Um, and then we have some uh, recommendations of things that we believe should be addressed before you take action on this. Um, there's also a uh, report from the, the engineers asking for, for some additional information. Um, so I have been in discussion with the applicant for some time now about how, how the site plan needs to come forward. So we've kind of been working back and forth on these things. Um, what you see before you is what the applicant has presented. Um, in your packet, you also see a letter from uh, MDARD, um, that is the Michigan Department of Rural and Agriculture. Um, and they, they made some determinations about uh, camps. Those are generally accepted best management practices related to farming operations. Um, so some of those GAMPs would indicate that they are in compliance with the standards from the state, um, which would perhaps uh, allow them to move forward with those, those operations in that way, even if they are contrary to what it says in the zoning ordinance. Um, but from a land use standpoint, we have still asked the applicant to come forward because the zoning ordinance requires that they get a special land use permit for these new uses that they are proposing here, the, essentially the expansion of the nursery stock and then the um, request for the addition of landscaping uses from the site. That's kind of it in a nutshell, I've kind of given, given you a high level overview of that, but I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. Otherwise, the applicant, oh, I'm sorry. On the property itself, in, in some of this, it references that there's areas being used, affected, changed, whatever, that is south of Oak Knoll. Curve. Yes. So I imagine that's on the corner of Curtis and, and Oak Knoll. But the address in one of the boundary descriptions says it goes from wherever on the north side down to Oak Knoll. What, what, is, what is the tax ID property orders for you? This, this, so uh, there, there's only one parcel. Okay. So it's all inclusive. So Oak Knoll cuts through the middle and it has a right of way through it? Correct. Okay. It's, a, it's an easement through the middle, a private, private road easement to provide access to those folks who live in the Oak Knoll. Okay, sure. So they got what, 66 foot to the middle? I believe so, yeah. All right, thanks. And, and then, Paul, they're going to uh, not use that driveway anymore off of Oak Knoll. And, and the other question was uh, on the uh, west, west end here. Uh, is that uh, existing or they're going to be planting uh, more screening on the south here? Uh, the west, west of I mean west, I'm sorry, west, if that, is that existing or is that uh, uh, going to be doing some planting and screening in berms or whatever there? North of Oak Knoll, but west of the existing Correct. greenhouse, that is where they're proposing the landscape business operation. And then they're going to stop using that driveway at Oak Knoll here in the front, close to Curtis Road. That is what the applicant has indicated in their in their application. Um, they they will obviously have to cross over Oak Knoll to, to get to that south side. Um, but but for the landscape business operations, uh, they've indicated that they would utilize the Curtis Road entrance. And then on the east side here, there are some existing shrubs, and then they're going to put some more stuff in to block from the neighbors right there. Yeah, so definitely the landscape business has some particular screening requirements, and so they have indicated some some material here. Um, we've asked for additional information to, to verify that it meets the standards and, and the section of the way. Do they have to be on burns? Will they have to be elevated? or no? Not necessarily. Um, I think there's no passage requirement in the ordinance. Um. Should we allow the public to speak and ask their questions and we go after that? Sure. You could also let the applicant give a, give a quick presentation if you'd like and then, yep. then open that for the public. We'll, we'll save our questions after after the public. Okay. Uh, Mr. Zimmer, if you would like to present, sure. please. Um, you can, you can uh, you use that or you can sure. stand right up here. Well, if you're, if you're loud enough, I'm loud enough. I don't even need a microphone. I can sit by the mic over here. Okay. <clears throat> Push it. Yeah, it's already green. Hello. Can you hear me? All right. Hi. My name is Nick Zimmer. I am the owner of Willow Greenhouse. Uh, been operating Willow Greenhouse for the last 10 years. Um, over the last, you know, 
over the last 10 years, we've been, you know, expanding and we've slowly, you know, offered more products and have grown all of those products on site, um, or at least over 50% of them, um, which has um, led us towards the uh, assumption and hope from the state that we were um, a farm. And um, I'm, I'm starting that. We have kind of two things going here. We have the application for the nursery. We have the application for the uh, landscape business. I look at them as two separate things. Um, from my perspective on this whole thing um, and dealing with Paul and trying to figure this whole thing out, um, I am a farm based on the state's definition of a farm. I'm a farm operation. Um, I grow farm products on site. I sell them on site. Um, at the beginning of May, I got you know a big letter from the township saying all of these different violations that I was um, you know responsible for, and um, this led me down this path of trying to figure out what is a farm and am I a farm? And so I went to the state and I asked for an audit, and the state came and did the GAMPS review, um, which I passed for the GAMPS um, farm market irrigation pesticide fertilizer. Those things tell me that I'm doing the right thing as a farm operator. I'm following the state's guidelines. I'm doing everything that I'm supposed to do from their view. Uh, their view may differ than what the local ordinances view, but talking to Paul, I've been trying to figure out, like, he won't... Today, he's told me that I am a farm, but that I'm also a nursery. And I guess I have a very hard time understanding the difference, and if... I'm a farm, am I, do I have to be a nursery separately? Um, so that's kind of one portion of the question tonight, and I'm really here hoping to get clarity. I've spent a lot of time going back and forth with Paul, six months really, um, with little to no clarity on what I am and what I'm allowed to do. And this whole time I've been here in this community, I'm building something that I think is an asset for our community, and I really am at heart, just somebody that wants to do the right thing. And I want my neighbors to be happy. And I want to have a community that's happy with me. And up until this year, I really thought I was hitting on all those levels. Um, unfortunately, I got a bunch of different complaints from neighbors this year that I really didn't know about. And although they may have told me that, you know, we've said things to you, this, I really didn't have a clear understanding of what these neighbors were upset about and would have been so happy to discuss one-on-one -on -one with them. Unfortunately, they led to a letter to you guys, which is why I'm here today, um, and kind of bypassed that step, which I would have loved to discuss planting trees and doing whatever you guys really wanted me to do. Um, but at this point, now I'm here. I've had to deal with Paul for six months. It's been an absolute unpleasant experience. And um, I would love to get past this. I want to have a positive experience with my community. I'm here for the long haul. I'm not going anywhere. And so since I've been here, I, I started the, when I bought Willow, we sold how, uh, bedding plants and vegetable starts. And as I've been here, I started selling perennials. And then I started selling shrubs. And then I started selling trees. I never like woke up one day and said, I'm a nursery. I just was doing what the community asked me to do. They kept asking for more plants, I was growing more plants. And we grow them, we're not English gardens, we are a production-based garden center. We grow the plants on site, and we sell them to the community. And that requires a certain amount of disturbance. That means dust, that means soil, that means pots, that means skid steers, that means forklifts. This is, this is farming, it takes work. And unfortunately, my, my community, my, my neighborhood, did not like the direction that I was going. And I really, I'm hoping to leave this meeting with a clear understanding of how we can move forward together and make this work. And again, I'm, I'm doing this for the community. I want to have a positive experience, and I hope everybody does. And uh, so that's, that's my spiel. The landscape business has, we have been landscaping for the last five years. We never had a, a landscape business, but Willow Greenhouse customers come in, they say, will you please plant that for me? I'm like, sure, of course. And that has evolved into, now I have, now I have two trucks, and I've got three dump trailers, and I've got 
five guys that are willing to install plants for the local community. That's the extent of my landscape business. I'm not selling bulk material. I'm not housing pallets of stuff. I'm, I'm just installing per situation. We get materials per job. We don't hold materials on site. Um, it's a super lean and mean little machine. And if I had to today, I could say, you know what, screw it. Let's everybody take the truck home. And it doesn't even exist. It's, there's nothing to it. It never took, I never created something for Evergreen, for the, the new landscape business. I just took a little 100 by 50 part of Willow in the middle of it, away from everybody, and said, I'm going to park a couple of trucks here. And the, the guys can come and they can show up and they can take the trucks and they can go. And it's a perfect relationship. I have the plants. They have the labor. It's, it's perfect. So <clears throat> I didn't really recognize that it would be such a thing to try to do this. And darn it for me for thinking it was going to be something simple. But six months later, here we are, and so much time and energy and money has been wasted between me and Paul, going back and forth, getting nowhere. And so I'm hoping with you guys, you can help me find some clarity. And it's not just me talking to Paul. And it's, uh, it's me talking to my community. And like, again, I'm here because I want to be here with you. Not because I want to like be some big greenhouse baron that like takes over the whole world. I love what I do. I grow plants. It's what I do for a living. It's my passion. And so I just, I've been feeling very bullied and very undermined this whole experience. And it saddens me because I, I moved to this community because I loved it. And it was rural, and it was farm-based, and like people were nice, and the neighbors were nice. And if you had a problem, you go over to the neighbor, and they give you whatever you need. And like, it's just gone in a different direction these last five years, and I'm just kind of sad about it. This whole thing has made me very sad. And at heart, I'm a very happy person. So hopefully you guys can help me find some clarity tonight, and we can go in a positive direction and take this thing out of this negative, dark cloud that it's been in, and head to out of this. That's my spiel. because we liked everything around us. It was open. And in Dearborn Heights, we lived in the last country-like neighborhood. So we were leaving a country-like neighborhood, which wasn't as big as what we have here. We, have, we had six acres here. But when we moved here, we were looking at green. We were looking at nature. We were looking at everything open. OK, but we're realistic. We know that life changes, and things don't stay the same. So when the greenhouse changed hands, we met the lovely family, Nick Zimmer and his wife, and then they had kids, and then we met Jenny, and we met the people that worked there, and I shopped there, and I brought my friends there on a yearly basis ever since these opened, and we did a shopping day and lunch. But in life, you know, it's busy, we have things going on, and all of a sudden, I'm looking out my window, I can no longer see green. I'm looking at evergreen, which is the truck which are the, how many greenhouses are now on that site? It started out with, Alan had one, now we've got, I don't know, six, seven, but there's no more green that we're looking at from our window. It doesn't affect the other neighbors as much as it affects me. And that's how I feel. So, and, no, and Nick, you've never talked to me about that. Joe has even talked to you about that before we sent the letter. So I don't know, you're blaming us. But you better think that you didn't talk to us. That's we didn't exist. Rally. And That's it's supposed rally. to be about neighbors, not just about business. That's a sick rally. Well, if, when we talk to you guys, if you could, it would probably be easier if you could address the planning or, commission. So you're more than willing to, we just want to try and keep things. So 
So yeah, I'm okay. okay. Yeah. I just want us. I just don't want us to get blamed, you know, for just presenting this letter and complaint when the warnings were there. I'm Joe. I know. I don't know about anybody else, but Joe talked to him, and I think sometimes Joe gets, you know, flies off the handle because Joe is Joe. <laughs> you know, know. And, you know, and maybe Nick took offense to that, but he he realized that something was going on. Thank you. Um, we'll raise your hand. We'll okay. We'll go. If you, if you could say your name, please. Sure. Um, I'll actually sit over here. Oh, please. certainly. <laughs> My name is Kelly Culligan. Uh, my husband, Ted, and I are residents of the Oak Hill subdivision. Um, we've lived there since 2005. And you know that there are a number of people from the Oak Hill subdivision here, and they've asked me to sort of collectively um, address some of the concerns that we've had um, with respect to the greenhouse over the course of the last couple of years. Um, I want to be clear that we're not here to oppose the conditional use permits in their entirety. Um, we are all customers of Willow Greenhouse. Um, we support their growth and success. And we're neighbors with the Zimmer family, and we're happy to be neighbors with the Zimmer family. But we do have concerns about the respect that's been shown to our property and our use of our property um, with the expansion and the growth that's been taking place over the course of the last several years. Um, specifically, we referenced the 66-foot easement um, that's our private road. The Oak Knoll residents are responsible for maintenance of the road as well as the um, land that is on the sides of the road through that entire 66 uh, feet boundary. Um, and when the greenhouse began expanding, it started causing significant impact to our enjoyment of the properties as well as to that road <coughs> easement. Um, there were additional buildings that were erected there. Um, the extended the parking lot and filled the north side and the south side of Oak Knoll with gravel and dirt. So um, that has started to really impact what we're seeing as we're driving into the subdivision. And it's also impacting other things um, with respect to our properties. So we submitted a letter to the township and to the planning commission on August 23rd of this year that outlined several of the concerns that we had. And I do have a copy of the letter tonight because I'm not certain whether it's in, it wasn't in your packet, but I'm not sure if anyone has seen it um, since it was submitted in August. Um, but there were, there were certain issues that we addressed in there, um, specifically the gravel fill on the south portion of the, prop, of the um, greenhouse parcel, we feel may have created some water diversion, where water used to flow down the Curtis Road drainage ditches, um, is now, we think, being diverted more into the Oak Knoll subdivision through the ditches on the Oak Knoll side. Um, we have concerns about that because specifically with respect to my property, um, we have a drainage easement, and there is a property adjacent to ours that has not been developed yet, but will be in the next few years. It's just recently been purchased um, for a house to be built there. And so with that drainage easement that comes into there, we've seen in the last couple of years additional water flowing into that property. And there is a, a low-lying area there in our backyard where the water will um, stand for a period of time. Previously, it used to um, dissipate throughout the course of the summer, and we've seen it actually take up more space um, in that area, as well as stay further throughout the season. So we have a lot of concerns related to whether or not there's something going on there with the drainage. Um, we also have concerns with respect to increased dust from the gravel, and we understand that that's part of the operation, but we would like something to, to see if there's some solution that we can come to that would block out some of the increased dust and the gravel that comes across the paved roadway of Oak Knoll. We've seen a lot of increased traffic utilizing Oak Knoll, um, the Oak Knoll Road. The driveways from the greenhouse property onto Oak Knoll are very close to the Curtis Road intersection. And so we've had a lot of large trucks and trailers utilizing the Oak Knoll private road easement um, to enter the greenhouse properties, both on the north side of the property and the south side of the property. Um, we have concerns um, with customers entering and exiting the property through Oak Knoll. Um, sometimes they park on the side of the Oak Knoll private drive. Sometimes they're sitting in the roadway. Um, a lot of the traffic when it's exiting the greenhouse doesn't stop at Oak Knoll and then come out onto Oak Knoll. It kind of just pulls on out. Um, 
And that we have safety concerns with respect to the pedestrians utilizing Oak Knoll for bicycling, walking, and also for us driving on Oak Knoll. We also get a lot of people coming <coughs> in um, driving around just to look around and see what's back there. Um, I stated that that causes us concerns, but specifically for me, we have two young kids. They, they do ride their bikes on the private roadway. Um, and that is also a bus stop for the school bus stop at the end of Curtis Road and Oak Knoll Road. Um, we're not currently utilizing that this year, but I know it, that is the bus stop for all the residents in Oak Knoll um, for now and in the future. And we probably will be utilizing that bus stop in the future. And then the last issue that we had um, that we were concerned about was just having to look, as, as Loretta was saying, you know, we, we have to see this as we come through there. And so there are trucks there, and there are trailers there, there are racks and carts, There's, there, there are other things piled up and stacked up along the sides of Oak Knoll and behind it that we can see, even though people from Curtis Road can't see it, because it's behind the greenhouses. And so um, we were hoping, when we looked at the park <coughs> plan, that there would be something in there that showed us um, that that would all be screened off so that we wouldn't, we wouldn't have that impacting us any further. Um, but on the site plan, the things that really concerned us were um, the gravel fill and dirt that occurred on the south side that created what we were concerned about with the drainage issues. That's not accounted for in any site plan that we've seen. And so we don't know if that's impacted anything. And we were hoping there could be an assessment of the stormwater impact from that gravel fill so that we have an understanding of whether that's diverting stormwater into our properties. Um, there is a damaged culvert on the driveway from the north, on the north side from the driveway from the greenhouse into Oak Knoll. Um, and that's creating water pooling <coughs> along the Curtis Road and Oak Knoll intersection up in that front, um, <coughs> what is that, the, the northeast corner of Oak Knoll. Um, the, the site plan for the north side that was submitted doesn't reflect the boundaries of the road easement. Um, and it doesn't reflect the Ciccarelli property line. And the Ciccarelli property line actually crosses Oak Knoll, and there's a chunk of it that comes out of the, of the property. And on the site plan for the north side, there is um, some existing evergreen trees that's been included in the screening that was proposed. And you can see that um, in the bottom left-hand corner of the site plan along Oak Knoll. Those evergreen trees are actually on the Ciccarelli property. Those are not on the greenhouse property. Um, and so we're concerned about having those particular evergreen trees included in any um, landscaping buffer that's, that's provided there because they're not on the greenhouse property. And they also do not completely shield or provide a good buffer um, to the landscaping operations that's been proposed behind the greenhouse. There's actually a tree missing that creates a large gap, and those trees don't go all the way back to the wooded area on the on the far, on the back side of the property, on the west side of the property. Um, so we would we would hope that any landscaping, any um, buffer that's created there with evergreen trees or any other um, stuff goes all the way back to the property line and behind the Chicarelli property line um, that's that's not represented in that site plan. Um, we would also like to see where the setbacks are. We don't have any idea where the setbacks are or what setbacks are going to be on the, on the site plan. Um, and we would like to see the screening <clears throat> continue on the south side as well. Um, that's not on this proposed plan, but it was on a proposed plan that Willow had submitted back in, I think, April um, that we had seen in the file. Um, we would like to see the south side of Ocean Oil planted as well, just to provide screening from that gravel nursery area that they're going to be utilizing. And then as I said, with respect to people using the road, Oak Knoll Road as an ingress or egress to the property, we understand that the Willow Greenhouse employees and, and owners are gonna cross the easement to access both sides of the parcel. But we wanna limit people coming in and leaving, particularly large trucks, but also customers um, utilizing Oak Knoll because we're responsible for the upkeep of the road and we're concerned that that's going to create additional um, burden on that road as well as safety concerns. So as, as we review this, that, those are the items that we would hope to be addressed and, and the concerns that we have related to it. Thank you.
it, it's it's nice to see that it's developed instead of just kind of to me it is. It is. Um, I love the looks of the uh, flowers you grow there. Mums. Mums. I think you know there's 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 uh, there's a seasonal beauty to willow, and it's from what I see daily. <laughs> I like the place. Um, again, like all neighbors, I've got a bad problem with Nick. It doesn't make any sense. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'd like to know what is I'd like to know what is the dis the minimum distance from uh, property line to business. Can we discuss that stuff here, or no? Okay, we'll get to that later. Okay, that's part of our setbacks. It's in our ordinances too, so it should be available online. Anyone else? Nick, you want to contribute again? Yeah, I was just going to mention um, that I do have plans in my site plan for screening. Um, on the greenhouse side of the property, which to me is the most kind of intensive side. The south side is, is used for production of, um, of annuals and perennials and shrubs. So we grow mums, we grow hydrangeas, we grow perennials. They're potted plants in pots out on the gravel field. Um, so, um, so to me that, that, that is a much less intensive area. And only people that should be going over to that side are going to be employees of Willow. Um, and we do have signs up to eliminate the use of Oak, Oak Knoll as an exit or an entrance. Um, there are times where people come onto Oak Knoll without knowing. And I can't prevent somebody from driving into Oak Knoll and having no idea what they're doing and thinking that it's an entrance and it's a mistake. And like, I've put up signs, but it's also a place that could potentially be dangerous for a truck. Let's say they didn't know that this was not the right entrance. And so they come on to Oak Knoll, what are they supposed to do? And so I think there should be some range. I know I'm, I would love to not let it ever be used, but that's just not a feasible option. It's part of my property, I have to get to the other side. You know? um, so that's, that's one piece. So we are providing screening along uh, the greenhouse side, but um, Green Giant Arbor by East, we're looking to just do a nice long strip of those. Um, there are some existing Norway spruces that I planted accidentally on Joe's property eight years ago, not realizing exactly where his line was. It was a mistake. I went to Joe this year and I was like, let's open these up. These are Norway spruce. They're gonna get 70 feet tall, 40 feet wide. They're gonna be huge trees. I have them about eight feet apart. You know, I, in my head, I was gonna space them out a little bit and, and open this up. When I went to Joe and was like, I'm planning to separate these. Those are my trees now. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, here we go. Um, so I do have, again, I have a personal interest in making this work. I think it's a very fair assessment to screen the greenhouse side. So yes, they can see green again. Um, but to screen both sides is a very large financial burden for me. And to screen the entire front of Curtis is a large financial burden for me. Thousands and thousands of dollars that a small business cannot necessarily afford. So um, I would hope that the, the planning commission would take that into consideration. Um, you know, I bought this property with the intent to grow. I didn't buy it for what Alan and Cheryl were doing. I bought it for what I could see it was going to do. And that parcel, it's not a parcel, it's part of my property. The, the south side, I'm growing the same plants I'm growing on the north side. He wants me to call it a nursery. I'm growing the same stuff. It's on either side. I've got perennials and shrubs on both sides. I'm not a nursery on the south side. I'm Willow Greenhouse on both sides. I'm a farm operation. I grow plants and I sell them. That's what I am. It's simple. And really what I'm here talking to you guys about is trying to make this cohesive with the landscape business and make that work. Because to me, the south side is, it, it's, I don't even understand why I'm here for that. You know, and I had the state come to audit that and they literally walked and I showed them. I said, listen, I'm in a fight with the neighbors. I would love for you to look at all of this and make sure that my runoff is not a problem. I don't want to have a runoff problem. I don't want to have a problem, period. So 
I made sure in that moment to ask those questions, and I'm happy to have them come back out again to state that to Paul, because he doesn't believe that that was part of what was happening. And again, I'm trying to do the right thing, and I hope you guys understand. That's all. That's all. Yes, ma'am. Um, I've been in that property. Of Can you say your name? Jill, Jill Barron, and I've been there for 30 years. And I What love, property are you back in the... Back in the way back. I'm okay. sat off the road, probably closer to the other south, and oh no. Um, I don't have to look at it every day other than when I come in. So I have less impact. Um, I love that it's a greenhouse. I love... I buy there all the time. But what I don't love is that it's a junk pile, okay? Like an old decrepit trailer being on the south side for three years where maybe someone spends a night in it or not. The tools that are left out, the pallets that are left out. You walk, you drive in Oak Knoll and there's trash on each side of it. It's embarrassing to have friends or family or anything come down that road. It has impacted <coughs> our property value. We are okay with it being a business. I'm totally supportive. I shop there. I'm all about it. But you can get the, the plants wholesale, for God's sakes. Like, this is a, a greenhouse. Would you not think that you would take plants, which is your business, and make it have curb appeal? And that's curb appeal for us driving in. And that's what is just truly appalling. And it has been appalling since Nick has taken over. It's gone downhill. The previous owners kept the property up. They mowed the lawn. On the south side where you're doing all your planting and stuff, the grass to Curtis Road at least got mowed. There's a tree that's been partially down for, I don't know, whenever the tornado came through months ago. And it just sits there. It is a trash pile. And that's a problem and it does impact our property values and we support it I mean look at the corner you know you got three cedars there it's a beautiful property they've maintained it they've taken money to make it look nice for those customers coming in no one here begrudges that business or the traffic I have to sit in to turn in Oak Knoll we never do that because it's a beautiful they've done a lot over the years that's all we're expecting with this property is to talk to the neighbors and make it appealing to the whole community, not just from Curtis Road, where you're looking at it from the front. It has all sides. If you look at the property line from their house to the property line, it's beautiful. They put a berm in, they put you know um, pines in, it's beautiful. They don't look at any of the trash, yet they haven't done anything for anyone coming in and out of Oak Knoll. We're asking for what they did to their own property. Right? Their own view outside their window that we don't have, that we had years ago. That's a problem. And if they just recently got cleaned up, I don't know how long that stupid decrepit trailer was there, three, four years. It's ridiculous. It's, it, it's, a, it's an eyesore to everyone that goes by there. So it, it, it's great that it was just recently cleaned up, but it was after we had to create a bus to get it cleaned up. And, and so you can quote all you want on farmland or not, but we live around it. And there's plenty of businesses in this area that we support because it's great for the community and it looks nice for the community. And this business, he's not maintained to look nice for the community. And it's all about expansion without looking at everyone around it. Hi, uh, Brian Bennett. Uh, my wife and I have a lot in Oak Knoll. We bought in 1990. We've lived there since 2002, so about 20 years. Um, one of my big concerns is the traffic crossing from the north side for the greenhouses to the south side where the sort of the nursery area is. Um, it's, it's not just cars and trucks, it's golf carts and you know, wagons and all kinds of stuff. Um, the big concern is obviously customers and large vehicles coming across and, and damaging, the culvert's already damaged, and the one on the north side by our subdivision sign is so damaged that no water flows through it. We get a pond 
that builds up. And actually, one of our posts of our sign is in standing water, where we get a lot of water. So that's certainly an issue. But I think something, Kelly did a great job laying out her concerns. But I think something that would help assure us that they're not going to have customer or other traffic accidentally even crossing there would be some concrete bollards. You, know, you see the big yellow things. And they could be narrow enough that cars and trucks can't get through there, big trucks can't get through there, but their golf carts and all their other things they need to tend to the nursery site can. I say I did bring an updated site plan that for the landscape business that those are setbacks that I can leave you guys with today. Okay. Um, that you can have for your review. Yep. And it should address some of those things that were in your circulation plan, setbacks, the stuff that I agree with you on. Like, and uh, yeah. So hopefully that'll help. the public hearing at 8.23, say aye. 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 Okay, the public hearing is closed. Okay. On to new business items. Conditional use for Willow Greenhouse, filed number 23-006. Now it's time for us to ask some questions. I'm sure we've heard a lot. Eight A. Good questions, go ahead. Yeah, sure. Uh, we'll start with Bob. Actually, we'll start with Bob. First thing is, I, I think Nick is, is lucky you have neighbors that don't oppose the project. That's number one. We've got some stipulations and some things that they want corrected. Um, as far as pallets and tractors and trailers, I mean, that's something that I think you're going to see in any type of farm operation. Um, but. With screening, I, I can understand that some of the neighbors don't want to look at the farm equipment. Uh, so hopefully with the screening that will resolve that. The other thing I was going to ask is, he's compliant with the state. Maybe uh, we could get a little explanation on the handling, since we all have wells out here, the handling of the pesticides and herbicides as far as getting into the groundwater or maybe we can get some explanations on some of that, how that's handled. But um, yeah, I, I think that with farming, there's equipment, there's skids, there's material. I don't know if all the trailers look beautiful and painted up, but I mean, that's what, that's what it is. But the same token, um, sounds like you gotta put some screening in and make some neighbors happy. Again, um, Paul, and I, here's a 
same. That's the same stuff. As far as runoff and the groundwater <coughs> and all that type of stuff. So um, there is a, a letter in your packets um, from from MDARD. As, as Nick said, they did come out and do an audit, um, which we appreciate getting that information from them because he did that preemptively. Um, they did indicate that they, uh, it indicates that they're, they meet the gaps for um, fertilization. So presumably that means that those items that you're concerned about have been taken care of. I've had a number of conversations with the folks there at the MDART office asking for clarification specifically on the stormwater piece because um, it does indicate irrigation and so my question was does that was that just for the greenhouse area did that include the area to the south and so i could never really get a, a, a clear answer from that office so i i, I tend to get get better for clarification from them um, I, I had a conversation as recently as today with the head of that department and um, i could not get a clear answer about that because i I have heard concerns about the uh, stormwater, and that may be due to the additional impervious surface around the greenhouse area. So if you look back at the 2015 site plan, um, you know that included a parking area just in the uh, east side of, of the greenhouses between uh, Curtis Road and the greenhouse there. So there, there may be some other contributing factors if they did in fact look at the nursery area and conclude that that is in compliance with their GAMPs, um, then we would not be able to ask them to provide stormwater maintenance for that area, or stormwater facilities for that area. So um, I, I have, have asked for some clarification on that, and I look forward to getting it. So I'm ha happy to report back when I do. into it a little bit more, but as far as the GAMPs go, when he comes out and inspects, that's more of a, do they see a problem with irrigation and runoff? Now, from a county and township aspect, the question that we typically ask is, how does water come onto the property, and how does water leave the property? And from our standpoint, those things can't change. That's, that's the sacred part of it. You can, the stream runs into your property and you want to do a retaining pond or whatever you got, you can get permits for that and then after that if you want to have a beautiful waterfall, great. But when it leaves your property, it has to leave the property in the same way. So that's maybe more of the question. So it really, for us, it becomes a more of a before after. What did it look like before? What does it come after? Whether the state says, yeah, we like what we see. Yeah, great information. But with the uh, south side and the gravel, question is more of a before and after. How, how, did, how does it look? So that's an mm -hmm. FYI. Uh, Chickarelli family, where, where, are they, where, where are you guys located? Give me an idea of where your property is. The first house when you turn off west and, uh, and uh, open old. Okay, so it's kind of down the hill to the south. No, it's the first uh, house. The first, first house. It's before the hill. It's the first house you see. Right? You can it's see it in Curtis Road. Yeah. It's right, right next to the road. I'm, I'm it's having the first house. It's the west. first part. Oh. West of the property. Look at the map. Oh. <laughs> they're probably, they're probably, on with the glasses. On with the glasses. Okay. documentation that exists on the, these culverts that have been crushed? I mean, they, were they county spec? Were they installed to a plan? Anything along those? Just, just for reference. Uh, so I imagine at the time that the private road was approved, they were reviewed and approved for engineering standards, but I don't have any specifications on them now. That's when these culverts were put in, when the road was originally done 20, how many years ago? 30, 30 something years ago. Yeah, the galvanized steel? Mm -hmm. Galvanized, yeah. yeah. The galvanized steel? Okay, so it was a county spec as far as we're concerned, those mm -hmm. culverts were part of that original plan that was in there. Yeah. Okay, and then uh, for, for the driveway that comes out of Willow 
onto no. no. What exists for paperwork for that? Is that part of a plan? Is that an approved driveway? Any, anything like that? Because it's considered, I don't, I don't know how it's considered, because you're not a quarter lot, because you don't, it's on both yeah, sides. It's always confused me, and I, I really couldn't answer that question. I mean, I've always had to get access across, but like it's never been a clear <laughs> driveway, per se, or I, I really don't know. I mean, it was, when I bought the place, it was always a confusing matter to is me. There, is there a reference to it? Was that there before you? Took possession? Yeah, I believe, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think okay. it was a lot smaller, but it was there, yeah. It was eight think, foot. Okay, uh, maybe something like that's written in, in the deed for it with the right of way going through that, you know, with this you have access to or access across at this existing spot. That'd be interesting to know. I always thought it was like you were giving permission to them to access well, the, my property. It, it is a right of way. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. Your property is giving right of way mm -hmm. in this world by definition. Yep. So, but still there's the concerns of because now it's an yeah, access. Absolutely. It would just be interesting to see what's in there. I, I, I'm good for now. Is, is Oak Knoll uh, gravel or paved at a certain point? We paved it 10 paved years ago. It is paved? Yes. 10 years ago. Okay. Asphalt, right? Yes. Okay. So I have some questions. Um, and thank you for sharing on both sides. I, uh, I'm i a small business owner, so I understand from a small business standpoint where you're at. And I'm, I also lived um, in a prior house next to a small business that I moved away from for all the points that you're saying too. So I understand uh, both sides and I understand that um, as you live there next to a small business, uh, you want the quality of life and you're just talking about the experience of um, just life that you live on a given day. So, you know, thank you for sharing. Um, as far as um, as far as the noise yeah. is concerned, one of the main things that I had an issue with when I lived in my old house was the business was grandfathered in, which like it is now, and uh, the hours of operation, they went in and warmed up their equipment in the wintertime, well before the hours of operation. And that was a problem. That was very loud and it really uh, um, affected quality of life. I see here for noise, it says typical vehicle traffic. And you know, typical vehicle noise for a traffic. Understanding, and, and maybe you can get clarity to it, I know we're talking about farm and nursery, but tractors and skid steers and stuff aren't typical noise. So you have that noise, that I understand from a small business standpoint, that you need them. So um, in the hours of operations, um, I think there needs to be some clarification, maybe some stipulations where um, that noise is that noise level is respected and the uh, noise time um, so we're not being woken up you know or they're not being woken up on the early morning hours or if they're trying to do a barbecue in the afternoon in the summertime that they're not hearing tractors zooming across or whatever else after hours or things that aren't the typical noise um, I don't know is there a garage or a barn to store this inf or this this equipment when it's not business hours, or is it just stored outside? Depends on the season, and I have greenhouses that are seasonally open that I'll store like my skid steer or my tractor in. I would say that most of the time they're stored outside, away from uh, adjacent properties. Um, but yeah, I don't have the capacity to store them currently year round. Okay. And I'll tell you too, I own equipment too that I do store inside. So I'm not just asking and yeah, no, whatever, sure. point fingers. I'm, I'm right there with you and them. Um, as far as the gate, the egress, I understand that you have to get to both sides. Is it, I guess my question would be too, is having a gate there, because um, there is some kind of training for people who want to patronize the landscaping business not to use this gate anymore. So would it be reasonable for some kind of stipulation to have some gate there that can open, they go out, take whatever equipment they want, farm the land, whatever, and then the gate is closed while they're farming and they come back, they open it, drive the equipment back through, and the gate's closed again. 
restricting access, at least helping train the patrons on where to go, and then obviously if he's expecting deliveries or trucks, uh, you can't control people who don't, you know, aren't in your realm of control. I understand that, but if you if they are in your well, your realm of control, being forcing to them to use a specific driveway, um, I don't think that's, you know, I don't think that's an unreasonable ask from people just to respect the roadway and and obviously it's, it's the egress for you. And you know, screening. I think screening um, is a reasonable ask. You know, I remember my old residence, I, I didn't have that request. I had to see it, and it was a whole lot worse than it is now. So, um, you know, I, I moved to Salem too to stare at greenery. And, uh, you know, um, but at the same time, I understand that this is, this is a business and you have business things there. So um, it's not gonna be a perfect scenario, but it, it, it can certainly be helped with some trees or um, and I have passed your house, and it is very beautiful. The berm and everything else you have there is, is uh, really nice. Um, and then, if, Paul, if you can explain, uh, Mr. Zimmer uh, talked about farming, you know, farm versus nursery. Um, can you help me understand uh, what the difference is there? And then if you can, you know, for me, like, why does it matter, I guess, from, from our standpoint to... I guess, I mean, what's the point that he brought up? I'm just curious as to what the issue is. So um, there are definitions in the zoning ordinance, and uh, the activity it has on site meets the definition of both a farm and a nursery. And a nursery um, is a conditional land use in this zoning district, and so that would require them to get a different kind of approval. If, if he was just to establish additional farming operations. So any any new use in any district or any expansion of any use in the district would require you to get some kind of zoning approval. Um, so if it was just, you know, uh, tilled farming operation, expanding into a new field, uh, a farmer might come to me or a, or a person who buys land and decides they want to establish a farm, they would come and the simplest form would be to fill out a zoning um, compliance application and that could be signed off. Uh, there are other things that require site plan, and so, like the greenhouse, for instance, uh, that is also meets the definition of farming operation because you're growing and selling plants. But the ordinance defines greenhouse, and it requires a site plan for a greenhouse. It doesn't require a special land use permit, so that's why that was approved back in 2015 for the expansion without going through that special land use or conditional land use permit process. The nursery, on the other hand, which it also meets the definition of, is considered a conditional land use, and so that's why we've asked them to submit an application for that, along with the landscape business, which also requires a conditional land use permit. Got it. Okay. Um, I appreciate it. Thank you for explaining that. Um, I didn't see in here, too, most landscapers have um, snowplow businesses. Is there, was there any thoughts of using it? I do have one. Oh, I've, I've already, I've, I've had one before, and again, like, I've been doing all these things for the past four or five years. Um, so yeah, we have a small scale, one person snow plow team. <laughs> Again, I mean, what I want to remind everybody is, is the, the scope of the landscape business is very minimal. It's a very, it can move any day. I mean, it, and it, if it becomes a problem, I'll just move it. I mean, it, I'll tell the guys to drive the trucks home, I'll take one home to my house. It, 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 there's nothing there, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, there's, there is snow plowing, we, we do, Local residential, our local community, mm -hmm. um, you know, sure. very minimal. Yeah, certainly I'm not here to yeah, yeah, how sure. the business is run. Yeah. Uh, the, um, I guess my thoughts. Water has been has been mentioned. The culvert's been mentioned. Um, I think for consideration, uh, the noise needs to be mentioned. That was that was a huge pain point for me. Uh, I think screening is very reasonable for what they're asking for, and. Um, uh, uh, certainly consideration around some kind of gate or some kind of a um, redirectional um, um, uh, signage or something that helps. Can we have signage up right now? Yeah. And what I just want to know is just going through the hypothetical of, of a customer driving onto Oak Mall, um, how they're going to maneuver and what they're going to do sounds a lot more intensive if you put a gate up. 
and could cause a lot more problems because of just the proximity to Curtis and them not knowing what to do. I'm just, I'm running through it in my head, envisioning this team, envisioning somebody coming in that's never been there. Obviously, patrons, I mean, I will do my part to try to, to advertise that people should not use it, that my neighbors are mad because they're using Oak Knoll. Um, but at the end of the day, I will never be able to stop everybody. And um, I just worry that it will cause more potential problems putting a gate there to make them have to do a three-point turn. And if it's a truck, like what's gonna happen? Um, but I'm happy to like make a note, send it to all my suppliers or the people that would ever send me anything and say, please use my front entrance. You know, again, I'm, I'm happy to do these parts and, and I'm happy, I, I get it. I, they don't want me to use a road, that's cool, it's their road. I'm not, I don't want to use the road, but I have to use the road to get across. And I just don't want to cause any due harm to a potential customer or to them if someone was to come onto that road. I think, I think you know, with regards to you know our conversation, we have we have conservative, legitimate concerns from neighbors uh, that I think uh, should be addressed. Um, um, you know, they considerations for stipulations with regards to traffic flow. So I think that should just be at least a consideration that we take into account as we consider this. You know, again, understanding that there is a small business that he's he's operating, um, um, just trying to marry, obviously, residential and business. I've, I've sat in both camps, so I certainly understand that. That's all I have. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, finally, issue, I don't know, I just come from Paul's report or where I saw it, about screening. And on the west side of the nurse, uh, the greenhouses, it's all wood. And I looked, and there's no houses directly in that wood other than off a six mile road. That's where the house, I am assuming that's his property. The, guy, the house that's on six, or uh, that and, and he comes in off the six mile. Uh, and to screen the property behind the little gravel thing, if that's what they want, that's just a short distance, I don't know, between their trees and the road. And then the screen back of the trees you've already put in, you want more trees planted behind those trees. Those trees are going to be gone. They, we want the trees all the way to the woods. The west, the west side's already, we're not asking for screening on the west side at all. The west side is, the west side's all woods. Yeah, uh, nothing, that's what there's there's nothing back I read it. It's just screening the whole thing, and I think it's, no, well, it's, 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 it's wood. both sides of the whole thing. The north, the south, that's it. I can see Curtis, screening the property north, down the uh, uh, east side of their lot, south of Oak uh, <coughs> Drive here. From your tree line to Oak Road. Yeah. Uh, and that. But as far as uh, the drive off of uh, the greenhouse onto Oak, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know if Nick could put a, a drive, a second drive onto Curtis and close that one off. That'd be great. I'd love to do that. If that's an option, I would. I would. Totally welcome that. I, I would rather see a, a, another entrance that can go along all the back of those greenhouses that would be straight back there. Then. And you've got, uh, uh, and if you put the screening along between your, uh, it looks like grass on this here, whatever that is, and, and uh, oak dry, fine. Then that takes care of them not seeing that, and that takes. But then, too, that hurts you from going directly to your property across the street. I'm going to need that regardless. And I need to have a vehicle, like an actual vehicle, be able to get across. Because I'm moving plant material with a trailer in a truck sometimes mm -hmm. from one side to the other. And to have a, a, what could only allow a golf cart wouldn't necessarily work for my farming members. Mm -hmm. um, I totally get like streaming. And it just, when I look around my community at other farms, I don't see the same thing. And I see other farms within a one mile radius of me that are a lot uglier than mine. And they have a lot more piles of stuff. <laughs> and I don't mind, like we live in, what is the resident, or I wanna look up the definition. What is, you know, what are we, where are we living right now? 
Let's stick to our plan. Well, yeah, and I was just noting that they intended to use some Let's let the planning system in. Excuse me. Daryl, why don't you finish your presentation? Okay, but that thing was my big thing, and then uh, that little drive I've seen it. Uh, and I've seen, uh, like a, uh, a lady in the back talked about the, the camping trailer that was there, uh, but that has been gone, uh, and that. But I, I then I'm sitting there looking. I guess Nick just put another driveway to Curtis Road and, and just yeah. use that for his property, the uh, smaller road, to make it even so he can just get the cart or whatever he's going to go over there with, a trailer that wide enough to get through there. And then just, uh, he can put the truck entrance over on that south side of the greenhouse. Uh, put a sign there stating, uh, you know, entrance for deliveries and pickup. You know, for commercial. In the south side, we don't really have that activity happening. You know? Yeah, I know all your stuff is on the north end Correct. of the green. Yeah. And then we'll shift it over there if we need to. But generally, the south side is used for production. We're, it's just stuff we're growing. So whether it's it's nursery stock that we just planted or it's mums that we just put out in the mm -hmm. field, um, but it's not it's not generally a place where we're housing stuff that's going to go somewhere else. It's going to grow there for a while and we're going to sell it to the public. Um, so I. I have tried to, I mean, I'll build a bridge, you know what I mean? Go up and over, like, I don't, <laughs> I, I don't know what kind of solves the problems. Um, here's what my other two senses. I sell plants for a living. I sell trees for a living. Every day, people come to my business and say, I don't like looking at my neighbors. Can I buy some trees for you? And I say, sure. And so at any point in the past 10 years, my neighbors could have planted trees across their whole easement and in front of Joe's house. If he didn't like looking at me, plant some trees. It would have cost him not much. But now we're asking me, a small business owner, to plant 500 trees, and it just, it seems ridiculous. And especially when I look around at similar businesses in our community that are not being asked to do anything like this. Anything even close. I got landscape businesses, I got farms. Okay, I'm, Nick, we're going to move back to okay. let the planning commissioners ask okay. their questions. Thank you. No, no I'm all set. Thank you very much. Okay. TJ? I don't really have any, anything. Up. I don't know if they have a question, of, but I don't understand if you have like an ingress, egress onto Oak Knoll, why you're not a part of the maintenance. That's part of the original easement. Um, the original easement specified that the Oak Knoll subdivision residents would be solely responsible for the maintenance of the roadway. Okay. It, just seems, it just seems odd if, if there's a, a driveway that that so, property would I think the situation was probably different back then. Yeah, there it, wasn't, was. it wasn't a driveway, it was a grassy land area that kind of came track, on that provided access to the south side of the property. So I don't have um, the specific easement language, so every mm -hmm. easement is going to have some description about what that is used for and who has the right to use it, who has the right to maintain it, etc. Mm -hmm. um, if you go back through some of the aerial photos, even back as, as recently as you know, 2015, 2014, um, there, there was not a distinct drive going across there. So um, that area was, was not used in the same capacity as now. It's mm -hmm. obviously... Uh, been kind of uh, more established over the, over the last number of years. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, as, I, as I'm hearing a different discussion here and how, how you know, mm -hmm. things can be curbed and hearing how Nick needs to use this in his operation, mm -hmm. it may be appropriate to come up with a new solution and maybe this is not the most appropriate place for that cross access drive and maybe the neighbors would be amenable to something uh, farther to the west that is more clearly just used for, for your operations, and maybe it's a, an opportunity to amend an easement. I mean, so it's an easement that's granted from uh, the Willow Greenhouse property to these folks. Uh, it would have to be amended, you know, by by all parties. Um, so, you know, I heard Daryl's idea about putting an additional uh, commercial entrance on, or for the truck entrance, on the north side but south of the greenhouses. 
um, maybe this maybe this spot that's so close to Curtis gets shut off, and so there's less confusion for customers or right. trucks coming in, um, and maybe there's a, a spot closer uh, to the west property line where you could have your access to the mm -hmm. south side that's more clearly just an employee access, and, and that may be something your neighbors could be amenable to, and you can discuss a way to make that more kind of palatable to everybody. So that could be something that, that could come out of this, mm -hmm. um, but it would take. Um, an amendment to, to that easement potentially, um, or maybe it could be something that is be agreed upon based on the language that's already in that easement. Is open only a dead end, or is there another access? There's no, another access. Dead access. Dead end. It's a dead end. Two cul de sacs branch out on the open. Dead end. Yeah, dead end. So, okay. But the only way you get out of there is out of the way. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you guys would just drive a little bit, two tracks? <laughs> Whatever at some point to get back to the houses. No, no. The the two track was was just the, the crossing from north to south, from the north side of Willow to the south side of Willow. Okay. The the road has been established. The, the road, road had already been established. Yes. So it's a nice subdivision. It's in there. It's been there. Um, I think you need. We would probably. I, I I think there's a number of things that we should probably look at, and I might want to caution you. And, Pushing the trucks back even closer to your neighbors, the Sicarellis, they may not like that. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I have some questions too. Um, so, excuse me, excuse me. Um, I, I do have some concerns about the water, where it's coming from got a lot of ideas here. I think we should leave that up to the experts and let them decide. Um, they'll, they'll figure it out. Engineers, that's what they're paid to do. Um, I did have, I, I still don't quite understand the difference between the farm and the nursery. And you say it, it's, there's, Different language. There's different languages. One's our language. One's the state language. And then somebody who whose whose language trumps. I, I hear a lot of opinions. I hear a lot of history. Um, all that's great for filler. But when it comes down to making a decision, sorry, I'm just a loud person. Um, and when it comes down to making a decision, I think we need to do it based on facts. So. So, again, so there's got to be a definition, I would think, somewhere of the difference between and what what it actually is to help to help move this process. I have the state's definition. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask him. So, so, so as I said before, we have a definition of both an agricultural operation and um, a nursery in the ordinance. It meets both. So the the definition of of, of Ag agricultural operation is that you're growing material on site for sale. Mm -hmm. right? um, there is also a definition for nursery, so not all farms are nurseries, but uh, and not all but nurseries, nurseries are farms. No, a nursery is a farm. Okay, so is that the answer? Yes. So it is a farm. Yes. Okay. Um, another question. Um, what causes some of the problems here is, and we see it, I'm just going to tell you from our planning commission perspective, we have all been through, well, not down here, yeah, um, trying to put a landscape business next to residential. It always starts out with, or maybe we're even talking about a trucking operation where they're just going to house trucks. It always grows, it always expands, it, and, and then there's a lot of unintended questions that we find out down the road, you say, Planning Commission, why didn't you ask about that? So <laughs> it always concerns me, quite frankly, so far. It's never worked put to put the to put the the snow removal and all that. Um, you have your hours of Monday through Friday. Michigan weather doesn't cooperate with anyone. I know this for a fact. I do have an outdoor venue as a business as well. Mother Nature never listens. Um, so that there's going to have those times, and that is going to be, you know, anytime you're moving from this cute little greenhouse to, okay, it's a bigger greenhouse, neighbors are still supporting, but when the problem comes in is when it starts to grow 
the commercial aspect starts to grow. So it's not always just a farm with, you know, the cows and this and that. It's, it's that whole commercial aspect that's coming in to, to complicate this. So we do need to be thoughtful in our, in our questions. Um, the water needs to be figured out. Um, also, I, I see in, in the complaint that there's some various public events, including monthly vendor markets, private parties, workshops, and other seasonal festive festival-like events. Um, I don't quite understand those. I know they used to have little fairy workshops in there. Um, I, I saw the I saw the signs for it. But what are what are the private parties and festival festival? I'm sorry. It just gets you know people are having private conversations. <laughs> just distracting. Um, the uh, in the the vendor markets and festival like events. That's where to me in going back to my in our previous experiences where you, they start to blur the line of is it a farm, is it agritourism, is it a nursery? Can you explain what those events are, how big they are, how frequently they occur? So two years ago I was hoping to build an events portion of my business where I was I was doing that kind of stuff and I hired somebody and I I made a concerted effort to do it and that's what you're seeing is old literature on that and um, I have since found that it was not a good business venture and so in my current model we are doing some some Christmas workshops but that is the extent of what I'm going to be doing workshop wise for the entire year. Workshops. Yeah and so people are coming and making reads we, we, I think it's a 25 person max um, you know, it's, it's a way for our farm to try to make a little extra revenue in a, in a tight little season. But it's not something that our business is built around. And it was something that I was trying to pursue, but I'm not anymore. And there was a time where I was trying to do a lot of different things. I'm an I'm a, I'm a entrepreneur by heart. And I do realize, you know, that I may have grown too fast. And I have, this past year, really refocused on resizing myself. And um, so... Beyond these um, few winter workshops that I have planned, I do not offer workshops. I do not offer vendor days. I don't have private parties. Uh, this was in the past. This was this okay. past you know, spring. I was still trying that, but I don't have that person working for me anymore. It's off our website. Um, so. so. So just to clarify, you know, like the small workshops within your thing would be still reasonable or doable of what you would participate in. Yeah, and I mean, we want to be able to offer classes to our, I mean, we're, we're garden center, you know, sure. we, we want to promote gardening and yeah. education, so. We'll all in the workshops, just to be clear, I'm not concerned about any workshops. I'm concerned okay. about the bachelorette parties, the graduation oh, no. parties, <laughs> you know, I mean, if, I, if somebody has graduation parties at their house, it's generally once every so often, it's your family, um, but to have them regular, um, that that's going to cause a problem, and, and we're and like John said, we're trying to balance the neighbors versus mm -hmm. the business with the, within the rules and the guidelines of the state, the township. Absolutely. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. I have some questions about um, mm -hmm. the setbacks as well. Um, I saw in here that there was no information, and I do know that for a commercial operation, it's always going to be significantly different than a than a residential. <coughs> so, Paul, can you address setbacks? There's there are so many questions in here that I think that this is incomplete. But did you say you addressed those in that new I one did, that you and just? I, mean, I was given less than a week to address all of Paul's complaints with what I originally, and like again, we've been going back and forth, I felt that in and of itself was troubling, but yeah, I did what I could in the week that I had to redo my whole plan, add in the pieces that he was missing. Um, you know, I've, I've shown him lots of plans, and uh, so hopefully this has the pieces that I felt 
I'm trying not to include anything on this nursery portion, because to me, again, I'm still under the impression from the state that I'm a farm operation, which is exempt from certain things based on the Right to Farm Act, including the site plan. So I'm here addressing the landscape business with the site plan, which I provided with, with the like setbacks, uh, with the landscape plan, with the circulation plan. I did not include a lighting plan because I don't have a structure. There's no structures. It's what the landscape business is, is 50 by 100 gravel. Um, so that's, that's the landscape business. And it's sitting in the back of Willow. Um, so I addressed the things that um, made sense. Paul kept talking about impervious structures. I didn't, or surfaces, I didn't add any impervious surfaces. Um, nothing was added, it was just uh, just allocated. Wasn't there a lot of fill put in over on the south side? On the south side, but that's, you know, again, talking back to the farm, and that's not what we're kind of talking about in this. Okay. But then that leads to the runoff and, yeah. and water potential, not knowing where the water's coming from. So it is a valid question. And you know, Paul does work for us and works for all of us here, you know, and that his, is his job. So I'm sure he's not trying to cause you any angst, but I understand the, the process can be. So I, let's just try and all get along. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, I think that uh, as far as the, the traffic going in and out of of Oak Knoll, I'm, I'm wondering that, you know, when that when that road was put in there, I'm assuming everything was done right and it was a whole different scenario. Now we've got, we've got more excessive use, we've got larger trucks, wondering if the, the driveways going back and forth between the north and the south are not truly driveways, which if you don't have a good base or foundation is going to impact everything around it and then the water as well additional water that's going to uh, affect all kinds of things so i think we have some issues there as far as, far as the screening and the landscaping goes um I, I yes i understand that like we have farms all over the place here that's what we love about salem i mean i like seeing all the old stuff out there and i know they scavenge it for parts and things like that that's part of the business um, i do also think that it's you know it's it's nice to keep a neat and clean place, especially when you live right next door to a residential neighborhood and your your business was not that big. That stuff wasn't there. So I think it, it becomes a balance of getting along with the, one another and I think you guys are off to a pretty good start. Um, this has been going on for a while because I believe it was mentioned months ago. So I'm sure this wasn't just pulled together in a week, so we just need to get some things ironed out here, and I'm sure we can do it. Um, I, I, there's, a, there's just so many questions in here that, you know, whether or not this was, is a farm, whether it's a nursery, um, do we have a better grasp on what we're dealing with now, do you think, Paul and Nick? I think that, you know, I, I, yeah, I, I mean, I, I think that there are some, some details that we're asking for. I think uh, Nick has done what we've asked in terms of submitting the site plan and the application for the, the uses on site. So, um, you know, as, as you see in the report, there are still some outstanding detail questions. I'll, I'll look forward to looking through the updated plan and um, certainly would <coughs> like to have Provided that with more time for reaction, um, we are where we are. I think we have some time to work on it. We've obviously been working with Nick since, I, I don't know, January of this year to get to this point. Um, so it's probably a, a good time since it's uh, winter time and things are slower. So we, we've got some time to work out the details. I'm happy to continue working on it. Ultimately, as we talked about the different uses and the different approvals necessary as I mentioned at the beginning there are findings in the ordinance uh, with with regard to the conditional use permits um, I think you can see from our report that we recognize that this is a rural area this is a rural use uh, it appears to be generally consistent with uh, the, the nature of, of the uses in this area um, I, I think that no one is is suggesting that this is an inappropriate use. There's just some details that need to be worked out. Um, there, there were some concerns that were brought up, certainly, which is what brought this to our attention. Um, 
I don't know if you all want to take any time. I think through your discussion, you have kind of uh, alluded to many of the findings that are required before you take a final action on it, but I, I would recommend that we, we do take the time to <coughs> review this again. The resubmittal, um, there may still be some outstanding questions, um, but I, I think we are on the right track. I also think that um, we need to look at when you start adding in the the snow plow. I understand you're already doing it, and you said you have been doing it for four or five years. Um, I don't know if that has been a problem for the neighbors. No, but however, yeah. I think the bigger thing is now there's going to be four or five trucks. There's all these problems. Right, mm -hmm. way back there every now and then. <coughs> there's all there's, there's one plow truck. There's only a route, one route. There's only one person driving. It's just I understand you know <coughs> concerns about growth and, and if you guys want to put some stipulations, but I I'm not willing to let Willow give up much more room than I have given right now, and so growth would mean you got to move out to a different place. Um, so that's my I. And, and again, I can get rid of the landscape business today. I could put it at a PO box, and I could tell everyone to go home. It's not; it won't be a big deal to me. Um, okay, thought, so let's what we're what we're talking about here is not trying to cost small businesses more money. We've never done that. We've always pushed things through to help people to be within the guidelines. Sometimes these things take a little bit of time um, in working out, and I know it's tough to change the wheel when the car is moving like you've been through the season. I totally it can be done. But it's hard. So um, I, I think we need to take another crack at this now that we've got some things ironed out and see what we can come with, come up with. Now that you've heard your neighbors and what they're talking about, and we're not even going to talk about who said what or when because nobody really cares, we're going to move forward and we're going to take what you have, we're going to hear what they have had, and let's try and pull this together and see what you can. I'd rather see you do make a proposal to us and your neighbors than for us to tell you what to do. Because I, I think you all know each other. And they, every single one of them has said they support your business. And, um, and, and there's, there's just a few things that need to be taken care of. I'm sure, this, I'm sure you can figure it out. And, and like I said, now that the season, I know you got your winter season and, and, and whatnot, but um, it's got to be a little bit slower, right? Maybe, maybe not. No? OK. Um, <clears throat> But we'll see what we do. We don't want to hold you up, and we don't want to cost you a ton of money. That's not why we're here. And quite frankly, that's not how this board operates, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so Bob, you had more questions. Yeah, just a couple of thoughts. Um, you were talking about lighting, and uh, I'm not sure if the lighting, uh, you have to look at it, it may be intrusive to the neighbors. You may like the lighting, you may not like the lighting. So I don't know if lighting is, is something that the neighbors want or don't want. And then the, the other thought is, you know, when people move out to Salem Township, most of the properties are zoned residential ag. And you need to know that when you move out here because mm -hmm. I see many farmers, so they say hours of operation for a farm. Well, there's many times in the fall, there's farmers out there harvesting late into the night. So we need to realize, you know, that farm operations are not typically or all the time a nine to five kind of thing. Well, what's different with this is it's, <coughs> What he's got going, he's got the public involved with what he's, some of he's doing. Yeah. Right. Farm. So yeah. that may include some, some, some lighting or not. It's got to be something that's reasonable. He's not, he's, he's not putting a CBS in there. He's, not, you know. Well, the neighbor, we've been through that lighting stuff before where some neighbors don't like the lighting. We've got, That's as you know, we got a big feud going on. Well, but, that. That, but our lighting is going to change <coughs> because of that. Yeah. You know, it has to be, you know, understand. Let's use our huts, be reasonable. I mean, he, he doesn't need to light up his whole, his whole well, area because he's a farm. So. Yeah, but I mean, hmm. you know, if there's some sort of safety requirements because he's got the public and it gets dark at 530 and he's selling Christmas trees till 6 o'clock. You know, I mean, those really are the just, things that, that Paul and he can work out. That's not for us to decide. Yeah, that's, that's just a, a standard comment that if they're adding lights, they need to comply. And I think that's what we said in our report. Okay. All right. Within Salem, you know, we have a couple of you know, handful of full farm operations. The traditional, what everybody pictures in mind, tractors and harvesters and combines and blah, 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 blah. 
is there any time restriction on when they can log a field? Cut A. It's against the law. Start a track. <laughs> Start a track. Is there any restriction? No. 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 And, and really, I think if, if there are any hours of operations that I think I've heard folks talking about tonight, it's really just surrounding the landscaping business. Yeah, yeah. Well, this whole thing is for landscaping business only, right? It is not for, it, right, but, but it, okay, well, no, this leads into my next question. If a farmer, if one of these full-time farmers wanted to put a permeable surface lot and rent a, you know, 100 by 200 permeable surface lot to his brother-in-law who ran, ran a landscaping business, would that require permitting and everything like that for that for that business to park their vehicles on, on their property. Yes, that is okay. exactly the scenario. Okay. All right. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Well, just play uh, play what if. I mean, well, you know, well, there's something yeah, they, a little play bit more. And like I said, it gets confusing. You've got, you've got the farm, down. but you've got the landscape, you know, the, yeah. and, or the nursery. And, and understand, I think this is kind of like, when someone comes in with a request for anything that causes the hearing like this, that really opens up the Christmas list for everything. So that's really, you know, someone wants to do just this. And you guys are playing the game properly by saying, yeah, we, we don't have a problem with that, but we really like it if. And, it, and equate it to like any time anybody puts in a bathroom nowadays in a business. Yeah, go ahead. You're permitted to put in the bathroom, but by the way, it has to be ADA compliant now. You know, you, you've, opened, you've opened up the, the, the box and now it's got to be this way so that that's really what we're getting through here. okay we're talking oh, growth yeah that's the yeah. way it goes yeah and okay okay Let's, so we're talking all right. does anybody have any other questions no all right I'm just trying to have clarity on where this goes from here. And like, am I just doing directly with Paul from here on? We'll that? see you again. Okay. <laughs> we'll get together again. <laughs> Let's hope not. <laughs> Okay, that's right. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I don't know if I can share. Here we go. All right, there. Did you want Kevin to do it? Kevin's got one of you. Kevin's got a bunch of notes here. Yeah, yeah. He can do it. <laughs> I'll second. You've been nominated here. Okay. So this is this is what we're going to do. There's a bunch of options. This, but um, I'll 
change, um, for example, the major ones include water, streaming, and, uh, and the traffic. And, uh, the and I'm hoping all. Make a motion to postpone action on conditional use of site plan application 23-006 for Willow Greenhouse till such time as an outstanding items are addressed from the planner's report dated November 13th, engineer's report dated November 8th, 2023, and items included in the planning commission include water engineering report. Outstanding uh, screening traffic with in and out of property, traffic in and out of North or Oak Knoll, um, noise, and that's. Okay. We'll do a roll call, roll call vote um, for the motion to postpone the action based on what you just said. Uh, planners report, the engineers report, and some of the main uh, addressing some of the main issues: the water, the screening the traffic in and out of the property and around Oak Knoll and, and any that might be considered excessive noise, so. Okay. Tom. Yes. Tom? Are we voting? Yes. I'm sorry. Okay. I wasn't allowed to. Ross. Yes. Huntsman. Yes. Lewandowski. Yes. Below? Yes. Uh, McLaughlin? Yes. And Rizzo? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Um, old business items, the Urban Services District. So, what this is. This is just a memo based upon the discussion that we've had previously, and the, it's a, just an urban, urban services district plan. It's an update. These are all the things we discussed of what is all, it's, it's clarifying to ensure that the vision that we've had and discussed in regards to the urban services district, like oh, we've talked open spaces, we've talked um, walkways, uh, accessibility between areas, um, you know, the, the appropriate uh, mixed use, do we have it? Um, Paul and Michelle are going to be working on this, um, so we wanted to put it out to the public in a, in a memorandum form to say, this is great because we got a full house here, what would you guys, uh, we already have kind of a, a vision out there that we've put in our master plan to, to kind of protect the, the character of Salem Township. Um, so we, when we bring this up for discussion, Paul's going to have more of a, 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 some pictures and reports and say, is this the direction that you guys want to go? Is this what, I mean, it's coming. It's been there for years. It's going to happen as soon as these lawsuits are all over with the court findings have come. Once that water and sewer comes in, it's game on. Um, so we want to make sure that the people that 
Shostak and, and others that come in there, that what they develop is, is, in, is in character with our community as much as possible, right? To the planned urban development, all that kind of stuff. And previously, when this first started, when I first started here, there really wasn't much of a vision there for the master plan. And, and it always, be, it seemed like it was always a struggle. So we then, when Paul came in, he said, let's see if we can, you know, show these people, put some pictures out there. What do we want to see? What do we want? If they're going to build, you know, these little shops and whatnot, what's it going to look like? We got some kind of basic pictures, but maybe is, is it enough? So let's just revisit it and, and say, is, is this, when, when they start coming in, are they going to keep within our rural character and, and community? You know, is it, look at the traffic. <laughs> is this going to work? You know, things of, things of that nature. Maybe not that level of detail. But, you know, we all have a vision of, we know it's coming. People live there, too. Can you imagine? I mean, that that has been, I remember somebody came in here, like, like 10 years ago, and they said, and they were so mad. They said, I just bought this property out in the middle of nowhere because I expect to be a field forever. And it's like, that was zoned urban services district probably before this young man was alive. So it just hasn't kind of come through, you know? It's about doing your homework and, and we too are neighbors. We, we all live here, right? Where it's not us against them. So it's nice that you guys are here, spread the word. We know it's coming. You know, we're gonna kind of pull something together and say, is this something that we would, would like to have? We ha the whole point of planning a community it's not changing it all over the place because we can. This is what we have set aside for this area because we're required to change labor development to have these areas. We don't want urban all over the place. We don't want strip mall. That's why we really try and stick to our rules of saying, well, we are we keeping with the character? And we want people to grow, you know, but you know, it's gotta be kind of within the guidelines, I suppose. So this is this uh, memo is really just kind of an update to you as the planning commission to let you know what we've been working on, what we continue to work on. Uh, we talked about it a few meetings ago and haven't been back together since, so we just kind of wanted to keep you abreast of some of the direction. And as Pam said, yes, we're not we're not trying to reinvent the wheel for this area. I think the goal is to make sure that we are uh, clarifying the policies and the master plan so that we are able to uh, kind of get. Re realize the type of development in that area that we want to see and that it doesn't kind of, um, like, like she said, deviate too far from the vision and the character of the area, albeit uh, it's going to develop, but we want to make sure that it develops in the way that we have envisioned. So as we discussed a couple months ago, um, we've been diving into the section of the master plan, um, doing a little bit of background research. and. In this memo, we kind of talk about what we are going to be bringing forth to you all for, first of all, you all to react to, and then um, looking at a, a public, uh, outward, outward facing public engagement process to, to, to present that to the community and get feedback from them as well. So this is really just a simple update. No, no real need for discussion. I don't think anything has changed much since our last discussion. Pam or Paul, uh, May I ask you a question? I'm John Moot. I live in the Urban Services District. Okay, John, can you wait until public comment? Sure. Okay, great. Okay, reports of commissioners and correspondence. Okay. Board of Trustees. Let's do. We lost our appeal. Or sanitary, yeah, sewer. Superior Township in there right away. Oh, we lost it. So I think we're just letting the dust settle. We're facing the possibility of having to put in a wastewater treatment facility. Superior Township would look at it. <laughs> Public 
land preservation? A couple things. Uh, there was uh, last month there was a kind of an open house for all the uh, land preservation um, um, people that contribute to it, like the Green Bells and some of the others mm -hmm. that uh, uh, contribute towards preserving land. They did a kind of a presentation of some of the value of land preservation, made, made that uh, information available to uh, people who own property or were considering it. So uh, there was that last month. Um, in January, we're planning a kind of a somewhat of a follow up to that looking at um, uh, what the Huron uh, uh, River Watershed Council, kind of looking at the overlay map and to further push the um, information that we need for the ordinances that we had talked about for um, um, conservation setbacks and uh, protecting our water, uh, recharge areas and things of that nature. Uh, so that's gonna be uh, the January meeting. Um, I'm going to ask Ann to help me out here. That's just got the deer in the headlight look. Um, <laughs> there, so that we have means of uh, people be able to see what's coming up. A secondary means is a Facebook page, just where we can post things. It's not for people to comment back and forth and have exchange. It's just a posting place for uh, people to, to maybe look to see what might be coming up. So some of these events. Uh, Paul, as you were talking about the USD and where we make that presentation so we have, you know, so more people have maybe uh, ways of getting knowledge of this so that they can be here and participate. That's a good idea. <laughs> okay. Okay. Planning consultant for you? You'll be great, Ann. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, approval of the minutes for August 21st, 2023. I make a motion to approve the draft of the August 21st meeting, 2023, as submitted. I second. All those in favor of approving the August 21st, 2023 minutes as submitted, say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Uh, public comment. Yes. So, uh, yeah, I had a question about this. Um, I, I read the couple of memos that are you, Paul Montagno, is that did I say that correctly? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, and so you had done most of this work, it looked like. Um, but my question was this my understanding was you took a look at uh, the zoning and what was out there and how it conflicted with the master plan. Right, and then that was okay. We want this all to kind of match up, right? Because we've got this vision, and so it looked like the ultimate goal of this was to rezone a bunch of areas in the USD. Am, am I correct in that or no? Yeah. So no, it's more about the thank you, uh, more about the future land use plan. So if somebody comes to develop a particular piece of property. Um, and they were needing to rezone it in order to redo that, to do that development, um, then it would conform to the, the vision for the area. So it's a, it's a, a plan to subdivide the master plan, not the current zoning map. Right, so there is an existing uh, sub-area plan in the master plan for the USD. Right. So we're looking at just refining that sub-area plan. Okay, so it's just the master plan, not the actual zoning. And how do you get input into that process then? I mean, I know that's what the object of this was to start to discuss that with the board. Um, so after we do some of this work, we'll present it to the board and then when the board has a chance to give us feedback, then we will roll that out in a outwardly facing public engagement process. So you would not have any community involvement prior to presenting plan? We're just going to present some background information to the board. So yeah. they, they've asked us to do some research, and once we've done that, then we will come back and, and come up with a public engagement plan, and that's kind of what we've laid out here. In this what started at this was to get more, gain more public engagement. But if we just say, sit up here and say, all right, tell us all what you want. Oh my God, we'll be here for days, right? So what we're going to do is, we're, I asked Paul to provide a structure or a framework 
of, of some things that we've just been discussing for years and the same the same kind of thing and then say you know whether it be an open house or have something to put out there and say hey here's what we have here's some ideas and then gain additional um, feedback at that time but you'd already have a plan at that time. it's kind of stuff you've already subdivided the the areas in the master plan at that point and that no? so what's that approved but what what we're looking at is it, it's very it's kind of vague you know there's really not there's not a lot of guidance there for developers when they come in to, to have an understanding of what we want and what we what we're anticipating because we've seen that when when all this came out with show stack they had their big this is what we're going to do and everybody went <gasps> You know, and so what we said, we want to see, and Paul create something, you know, with walkways. We want to see some open space. We want to see, you know, uh, you know, what portion is going to be open space? What's it going to look like? You know, and, and I think they even have some pictures of like some cute building types and that it's in, the buildings are in keeping in character of our community, things of that. We already have that. So what this is, is like, okay, it's coming. Did we miss anything? What are the loopholes? You never find the loopholes until until somebody is in here trying to do something. So we're it's just a continuous improvement process from what we have. Is there something that needs to be changed? Something that's that we missed the first time? Our so ordinance. This map that you had, Paul, that came with these memos is the one that's in the master plan, or that's new to the master. Yeah, I just I'm just curious to find how do I get input into that process before Everybody it gets too far be along? Because right actually, here. Gary has said, <laughs> yeah, Gary has Gary has said to me, oh well, you know all the water things were going in. Well, where were you two years ago when we were discussing this? And I wasn't there because oh. I didn't know. So I'm here. That's right. We're gonna have a new Facebook page. So I'll get you my contact info, Paul, right after mail, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think he's doing a nice okay. job of everything. It's All right. Really, uh, well, we will. Great. We I think with the, one of the things with social media now, it's so much easier to communicate with people and put things out there. Um, you know, it seems like websites have gone the way of the past, but yet they are still necessary. So we can uh, put some more things out there and ensure that we try and ensure that everybody gets included and we get plenty of time for people to participate. I, I, I was, we've done open house things before, right, Bruce? During the flag day. Yep. You know, uh, we had some maps out here, people came and whatnot. And, um, so that was just one way of communicating. But that was a number of years ago. Okay, any other public comments? Once, twice, yes, sir. I guess I have one. Gary might have talked to you about this at the last general um, trustee meeting that was brought, Dee Davies brought up. Um, she was hoping that someone was considering looking at protecting our township from, the flurry of legislation is coming out of Lansing. They're wanting to have imposed solar and wind farms, and I'm afraid Salem Township would be highly vulnerable to that. So is that something you guys are considering? Uh, looking what other boilerplate, other places have done, and maybe putting that in in, in advance? Um, Bruce just sent me something about that. It just, to come in, I know it's supposed to be just public comment, but we don't know all those principles. Um, I've heard when we've spoken with the, the lady from U of M, she said she told us, and she's an expert in the field and whatnot. I know you're from Salem. Oh, yeah, they're all experts. I know, I get it. But Salem doesn't really have enough openness for the wind. That's that's what she as we're not really very so that's one thing, you know, because I I don't know where I was, but it's all these horrible windmills that were just in there hearing about them yeah um, and, and the East Coast and all this kind of stuff she has been here a couple of times and she so she says you guys aren't really that lucrative Salem is not lucrative because you don't really have as much open space right? for, the way. for the solar though um, you know, Bruce just sent something recently to put in our packet, and that might be something we have, uh, what we call our planning commission, uh, a list of priorities. And so one of the things that we could, Paul, you want to mark this down, is to put, you know, do we need, do we need to revisit our solar ordinance? Because the rules are changing in Lansing, and I mean, you know, whether it's batteries, battery plants, or 
the people want to put in here. She just was the state. Yes. Some of the things you just did, the wind and solar ordinances, um, and got them kind of a little bit up, up to date uh, and current, which adds some restrictions for any developer who wants to put something in. The next best thing we could do is to, and again, it comes down to, um, where well, there's a lot of things, if you just say absolutely not, that's fighting words. Or if you say yes but over here or yes but over there, mm -hmm. uh, you have a better chance of getting it at least where you want it. So right. instead of putting it where you don't want it, come where you can accept that or where it makes most sense to put that type of uh, use for those sort of things, whether um, it's the battery farms or the solar farms. But yeah, the wind is probably the least likely because combination of our ordinances and the value of the wind <laughs> around here with solar and battery storage are two two items that are yep. and they go kind of hand in hand. And, and I think we did a fairly good job but that's why we're you know I see Salem Township as a, a continuous improvement process because we've changed the rules and we're constantly evolving so every now and then we need to do a, a checks and balances on these things and improves on a lot of things so we can certainly add that to our list of planning priorities now that the government wants to, whether they want to tell us that all the trucks can come through here and we can't say a thing about it or whatever rule they're making. <laughs> we do try to stay current, so it's good that it's good that you guys stay current. I mean, know what's going on in our community and, you know, speak up. But hey, are we, are we looking at this? That's a good thing. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Chairperson comment, I believe she has said enough. Uh, we are adjourned at 9.36. Thank you all for coming and participating.